Well, these buildings were purchased, two of them in 2007, one for 11 million, one for 25, but there's rumors that because it's now a double fronted house, it's now worth 60 million because you're getting two together, you're getting the muse at the back and you're getting a really big self-contained situation, which is very rare in London. But it's but lying empty. It's empty, it's been empty for, since 2007. It's never been used. It's, you can tell the, the, it's starting to degrade a bit. It's getting um, a bit dilapidated. Yeah. How many rooms would, uh, would it have? Well, if it was knocked, if he's knocked into two, and there's over 120 rooms, but the muse at the back adds another 23 or something, so it's, it's got 140 rooms altogether. A lot of living space. It's a lot of living space, isn't it? It could probably solve the whole of the Soho homeless problem in one building. Do we know who owns these buildings? Well, Matrix International owns the two you're looking at at the moment, which is an offshore company in the British Virgin Islands. So. Um, Who's behind Matrix, you've got to guess, but there is rumours um, that an ex-Soviet um, state, somebody in that state has uh, purchased uh, these through this offshore company, but that's just a rumour at the moment. Through the these buildings are obviously not maintained, you can see it, they're empty. Why would the owner do that? Why would they not be used? Well, ever since um, Switzerland um, brought in cross-border treaties and they started sharing their banking information with other countries, um, it was easier to plonk 11 and 25 million in London um, on an offshore company registration and no one knows who's behind the trust. So despite not using it, it's still a good investment? Well, if you calculate the leasehold diminishing daily, these are losing tens of thousands of pounds a week, technically, off the lease, but they can sustain that with values of 60 million. So um, why would you put an investment in losing tens of thousands a week? But it's probably better off um, putting it in various other places like Switzerland and the Cayman Islands, what's getting scrutiny at the moment. Yeah, it's a good way to hide your money in a sense. It's, London has become a better place to hide your 20 million plus um, on buildings and put it on an offshore company um, registration than it has Switzerland, etc. Yeah, because buildings like these are not an exception. Um, they're certainly not an exception, but there is probably 3,070 houses in Westminster alone sitting there on offshore company names empty. Um, which have got a different use of, um, you know, has been a home. Yeah. What does all this money and very rich people buying up property and not using it, what does it do a city like London, especially boroughs like Mayfair and Chelsea, well, do you think? Well, um, what happens is uh, since, we'll, we'll, we'll take a rule of thumb of the last 10 years, um, property prices in the high end have gone through the roof, it's gone crazy. Uh, one example, uh, the one we were in in Chester Square was bought for 16 million and it's just recently been sold for 35 million in a four or five year period. Um, the kind of millions that, you know, the, the, that's unprecedented, that kind of value going up in the property market. In a stagnant property market, it's only been rising recently. So that is a property market that hasn't moved really. But the high ends have been moving because it's a facility which is quite lucrative if you can plonk your money on the building and no one knows who owns it. Yeah. So this foreign money is, is forcing a lot of people out, so the normal people wouldn't be um, able to get a place to live here. Well, Mayfair, for example, um, it's forcing a lot of traditional buyers, which are bankers and lawyers and, and top-end people. The only people who can afford uh, properties around here now are the hedge funds. Hedge funds are buying up properties because they've gone to a, such a value that the traditional buyers have been chased away because of values of the like behind me. Yeah. You used to be... <laughs> you used to be a spokesperson for a group called the Belgravia Squatters. Can you, can you tell me what they did again? The Belgravia Squatters were a group of ragtag squatters, good squatters, people who were working. They weren't anarchists, they weren't drug takers, they weren't drinkers. Um, I started filming them on an amateur basis and then I ended up unwittingly being their spokesperson. And then one day I was given a list of uh, 30 properties in Belgravia and around, um, which were on offshore accounts, which I didn't know at the time. Um, somebody somewhere wanted me to out that list by squatting them, getting these owners into court, because no judge was going to give them back their property until they named the person behind the trust. Yeah. So that was the facility um, I was possibly used, uh, and the Belgravia squatters was the vehicle to do that. Is it still possible to squat houses like this? No, the law's been changed last year um, on residential properties. Um, it isn't 
you, squatters can't squat residential properties, but they can squat commercial properties. And then there is things afoot to actually change the commercial laws as well. So eventually it'll be illegal to squat anything, but at the moment it's only residential. So the government's really on the side of people who own these places then, isn't it? Um, the government, of recent, George Osborne has recently said if you're hiding your money in an offshore account, we're going to find you, but they don't have to walk far around here to find properties on offshore accounts. We estimate there's 3,070 3, houses in Westminster alone sitting on offshore accounts. Yeah, and, what, and how are these more than 3,000 properties being used at the moment? Mo they're all empty. That's the empty ones. Yeah. That's the ones who are not rented out on peppercorn rent of one pound a year, etc., and being used just to keep the lights on and the heat on. But that's the empty ones. Yeah. Um, in Mayfair alone, I've got a list in my pocket of all the empty houses on offshore accounts. Can London afford to have so many empty places? No, uh, there's 80,000 houses empty in London at the moment and it's pushing prices up. Because if you've got a commodity and you're starving people of getting that commodity and there's a shortage because it's empty, not for sale, the price of that commodity will go up.